I'll include a quick summary right at the beginning here to make it easier on this review. Overall, for the price, for this large, a 30 liter, 8 gallon ultrasonic cleaner, uh, I'm generally going to recommend this product. It's a promotional product. Viver did send it to me for free. But throughout this review, I'll test it and show how Cascade dishwashing powder works absolute wonders and is way cheaper than a lot of the chemicals. It's just use dishwashing detergent. Here's an example of a bicycle chain. Uh, the dishwashing detergent in this unit uh, works really well. Just This chain is just amazing, to tell you the truth. And even put some like old pliers and stuff in there, and it actually did a pretty decent job on these, too. You can see these actually don't look so bad now. Takeaways. It is heated. They included 18-gauge power cord, which is what they include on all of them, but on this largest 8-gallon, 30-liter unit, it's too small. This has an 800-watt heater and 600 watts of ultrasonic power. Too much for an 18-gauge power cord. So there's that thing. Only it really applies if you're going to get this huge, giant unit. The temperature controls, they work. It won't overheat. It has a sensor in it. I'll do a little teardown exploration inside at the end of the video. But... The temperature controls and its current temperature display, um, not super great. It tends to overshoot its temperature by about 15 degrees Celsius, which is uh, a little annoying, but it's still fine. I mean, the the I mean, it's basically all stainless steel. There's not a lot of harm, but that part of the electronics could be improved. As far as the ultrasonics, it's great. And you'll see inside this thing has 10 60 watt transducers. They're evenly spaced along the entire bottom of it. And it does a pretty good job. And considering that it's 600 watts of ultrasonic power, it's really not that noisy at all. Um, it certainly is noisy. It's a big ultrasonic cleaner. But quite frankly, if you put this in a uh, a side room and shut the door, you'll barely be able to hear it. It's actually, I was thinking it was just going to generate a huge racket, and it really doesn't. It's not that bad at all. Anyway, on the unboxing and the full review. Here we go with the unboxing of this ultrasonic cleaner. Do want to give FedEx credit for their absolute taking really nice care of uh, shipping this to me. Fortunately, they actually use double wall or uh, closed cell foam, and it's actually inset, so it seems they actually survived. They actually left the Chinese shipping sticker on here. It says they 475 units is how much they're shipping to Santa Ana, California. So Viver must have just a massive warehouse. Because that's 475 of these ultrasonic cleaners alone. You can imagine the amount of space that that takes up. Pull out our chunks of closed cell foam here. You have our obligatory peels on the lid. A little piece of styrofoam in the handle there, which I find a little bit interesting, I guess, maybe to prevent that from getting too dented in. It is stainless steel. What do we have here? Interestingly enough, we have a, a little uh, tea bin, but I guess this is to put in various forms of cleaning agents. And, you know, you, you don't want to use stuff, uh, anything flammable, isopropyl alcohol, gasoline, diesel, uh, lacquer thinner, acetone. Those are things you want to avoid, but I prefer, there's a variety of chemicals to use that are specifically for ultrasonic cleaners. I'm just gonna give it a shot with distilled water and see how that works alone. And then uh, people just have tried all sorts of stuff, dish soap, laundry detergent, uh, both liquid and powdered dish soap like Cascade. We have our manual. I guess this is a hose for draining it. Pretty flexible and soft power cord. Here's our little basket. It appears a bunch of our feedies have fallen off. 
I'll put those back on. It is a very thin and pretty weak basket with some distortions in the corners. But overall, it's fine for ultra ultrasonic cleaner. Here's my arm, and that's kind of the deal with this thing. Anyway, continue to talk about it. It is a bit pricey, I guess you could say. Uh, they're wanting uh, retail with shipping about 285 If you register, they'll give it to you for 255 Whoop, kick that. But this is a 8-gallon, 30-liter ultrasonic cleaner. Definitely have plenty of uh, fingerprints in there. So quite a bit of power. The other deal with this is that it is, has a heater that will go up to 80 degrees Celsius or 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And the ultrasonic power, that's where I guess where all the money is going, is they're claiming that this has a 600 watt ultrasonic transducer. That's a lot of power. Seems reasonably heavy. They do have little grab handles on each side, which I do like. They do have a lighted power switch on the back. We do have our specifications panel here. You can take a closer look at that. 30 liters, ultrasonic frequency, 40 kilohertz. Ultrasonic power, 600 watts. Heating power, 800 watts. On the website it says 500 watts of heating power. I guess we'll have to make a determination about that. There's our drain hole. And just goes to this little drain cock here. So that at least it makes it easier to drain. And then of course we have our push button control panel here. Uh, we can set, just turn it on and off. You can have it run for a period of time. Set in minutes. As well as our temperature setting. It appears that it is only in Celsius for the temperature setting. And you can run it uh, independently where you can like preheat and then run the ultrasonic or just use the ultrasonic by itself. And let's just zoom in a little bit here. Or we'll zoom in a whole lot. Well first there's a good look at the control panel. Um, tells you that you do need to have it grounded just to uh, for safety purposes. But one thing I thought was kind of interesting. Come on. Maybe. There you go. Stupid camera won't focus. You can see that they have this interesting pattern, kind of corrugated pattern. I kind of like that. I will point out here is that they include such a cheap fitting that it doesn't actually fit very well, even though this is MPT. So uh, you, if you put a bunch of thread tape on here, that will help. Or you may have to go to the hardware store and just get another barb fitting to whatever this is. It looks like it's a uh, half inch MPT. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. You shouldn't be able to just push it in like that. Unfortunately, but it is a cheaper unit. I put in three gallons of water. It's about halfway up the basket. The basket is not super great, but as soon as you get some weight on there, it will kind of cooperate a little bit more. About halfway up the basket. So to submerge all the way up to the top lip of the basket, you need about six gallons. So as I was saying, besides a variety of, of chemicals for ultrasonic cleaners, I was reading online and People just have had a variety of success. Things like Cascade Complete. Or using things like this Tide Heavy Duty. Or even using Dawn Dish Soap or Dawn Platinum or one of the better grades. Any kind of cleaning solution can certainly be valid. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just give it a shot on some of these pliers. And leave them in there for say 15-30 minutes or so. And to do an additional test, I'm going to put in this bicycle chain. It has a fair amount of gunk on it. I did wipe it down, but we'll see how it does along with the tools. Now, the heater does work independently, so you can heat it up. Preheat it before you start the ultrasonic cleaning process. Obviously, on the they have a variety of different size models, but on this big model with gallons of water, whoop, gallons of water in it, it's going to take a while for it to heat that water up. I have it set to 40 degrees, about 
a little over 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And so that'll give it some really nice, pretty warm water. Of course, once again, you can go up to 80 degrees Celsius, 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can have very hot water too. Warm water loosens things up better. That's why you want to use it. You will need a pretty, pretty decent circuit. Remember on this large one, which is the 30 liter, um, and I think they just uh, miss, you know, this Chinese conversion. The 800 watt heater combined with a 600 watt ultrasonic transducer, that's 1400 watts. You're going to want a dedicated circuit. So this is after 30 minutes uh, without any detergent, just distilled water. You can see the water's getting a bit gray. Probably most of it's from the bicycle chain. So it's not super magical. I'm going to try some disc detergent. One thing I was going to mention is the heating, some function does work pretty well, although it's slow. You want to have at least a few, you know, you want to have the thing at least a third to a half full so you don't burn up the heating elements. That's one thing to keep note. Also, the temperature thing kind of, it, it kind of overshoots is what it seems to happen. And the actual temp and the set temp is kind of weird because we can see how much it, like the numbers are acting weird. Because I had it set to 40, and what we can see here is like the actual temp uh, can't go above the set temp, even though it may go higher. So I had it set at 40, and it actually overshot um, by quite a bit, 55, uh, by 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. So it's actually pretty surprising. But what's weird is if I go back down to the set value... 40 oddly enough the current value also goes to 40 so uh, the heater works it does shut itself off so i feel it's safe but uh the electronics are a bit funky anyway i'm going to try it again with some dish detergent so this time i just used a normal dishwasher amount of cascade complete and after what you just saw uh, I would recommend using Cascade Complete. A lot of people buy expensive cleaners. This is just distilled water in a normal, you know, quarter cup or something of Cascade Complete. And you can't even see the tools anymore. Pretty surprising how effective <laughs> dishwashing detergent is. I'm sure most of that's coming from the bicycle chain. And, of course, the tools have... Just a bunch of patina and rust on them, so that's not going to get cleaned off by an ultrasonic cleaner. But if we do zoom in a little bit here, it definitely seems to have helped. That bicycle chain is definitely a whole heck of a lot cleaner than it used to be. Anyway, I'm going to rinse these off in the sink real fast here. Another quick note. I did not quite fill up. You're supposed to fill it up most of the way, basically, to this line when you use the heater. That's just to prevent the, um, prevent issues with potentially burning out the heater. I was fine with the three gallons because I was running it at a lower temperature, although it did overshoot a little bit. It's definitely not a big deal. The heating elements aren't up on the sides. They're on the bottom. It's just kind of a safety thing that they tell you to fill it up. Uh, at least three quarters of the way or more um, when using the heating element. Got it all drained out. Um, really worked pretty well on some of the items, particularly the bicycle chain. I'll show that in a second. I did want to make another note that you really want to make sure you have all the rubber feedies on. Something I was noticing doing a little bit of research is um, the reason that you have a basket is to prevent the metal items from resting right on the, the, the pan itself. Since it is ultrasonic, it's vibrating very fast. And apparently, people who haven't used the baskets, it only takes about 50 to 100 cycles of the machine for it to actually wear a hole into the pan and then it starts leaking. So you always want to have the rubber feedies. And if they ever miss, get lost or something... Do something, wrap electrical tape around the little feed or something, but you need some kind of softer material. 
so that you don't have issues with the metal on contact, particularly with the bottom of the pan, causing holes to wear into it. So that's definitely a critical note. Take a quick look. This is probably the best example of this Eiffel plier wrench. You can see it actually came out quite a bit shinier. Just let the tools dry and then spray them down with just a little bit of oil or something uh, to prevent them from rusting, obviously. But this plier wrench really did come out pretty well. It, I didn't even remove the jaw when I ran it through. But it actually not too bad. So I'd say if you want things extra clean, this you would have and it's a nice thing about using water and dish detergents it's a lot cheaper than filling it with simple green or any other kind of stuff which is a heck of a lot more expensive because then you can just drain it fill it back up and run a second cycle and that ought to get stuff really clean so i'll go and show the bicycle chain and then i uh, let this dry out a little bit and i'm going to open it up open up the bottom cover we'll take a look inside just to show the channel locks they did okay it's not uh, night and day a lot of this is just hard patina on an old tool so it's not going to clean up a ton but it certainly got rid of any kind of little bits of grit same thing with these old uh proto 240 these are <laughs> the reason channel locks became popular is because these same type of pliers were like this they're like just regular slip joint pliers they just weren't heavy duty enough those little bumps end up just failing that's why the big thick grooves on the channel locks made them popular Here's a look at the bicycle chain. This is where most of the grease came from. Uh, I could have put it in. The, this could also have used a second cycle. But nonetheless, look at this bicycle chain. Look in between those links there. The other side. These things are definitely magical for auto parts, bicycle parts. And once again, especially with cascade dish uh, detergent, particularly the powder stuff, because it's made to cut grease. There's all sorts of grease cutters. This detergent has made the cut heavy, definitely cut heavy duty grease, and it's just so cost effective. But look at this bicycle chain. This thing is beautiful. So this is something you want to make sure that uh, gets well dried, um, and then you'll want to lube it again. And this is just like super clean chain. Pretty amazing how the how this came out. A quick safety note, I was noticing that this wire when I was running, as soon as it was getting towards the end, being finished heating, I also turned on the ultrasonic and uh, this wire gate got warm. It comes with an 18 gauge wire and on the big unit, I think they all come with the 18 gauge wire, but what they don't, aren't realizing or haven't really considered is on the big 30 liter unit, this thing has an 800 watt heater and a 600 watt ultrasonic transducer that's 1400 watts that's too much for 18 gauge they should have included a 16 gauge with this i actually have a uh, copying machine power cord here which is a 14 gauge and this is why i'm going to be using with this unit from now on and here's a look inside i didn't want to mention that they do have a cooling fan in there a pretty big 120 millimeter 25 watt unit um there it's overall it its design isn't too bad. You can actually see that there is a bunch of transducers. 10 transducers by 600 watts. Each one of those is 60 watt transducers. If I zoom in some here, you can see where they've soldered and then put a little bit of hot glue on the wires to prevent them from fatiguing. At least that's a nice touch. There is a temperature sensor right at the bottom of the unit there. The temperature, I mean, it does not, it doesn't overheat. It does cut itself off. It's just the temperature control is a bit hinky on it. These transducers, what I don't understand is that there's a big socket head cap screw. So I don't know if there's bungs or fittings welded to the bottom of the pan and that bolt is actually bolting the transducer to it. And then they're just using some of this, this is soft. So there's some kind of silicone just to help seal it. Or if this is actually gluing it. I have a suspicion that the bolt is actually bolting the transducer to the bottom of the pan. Because I can't see them just relying on that glue. Um, there is... I don't really like the word uh, Chinesium. But there is some uh, a little bit of that going on here. If we look at all the transducers, they're nice and aligned. Except for this one. <laughs> which is just offset a little bit. Had a little error there. 
If we look at the power supplies, what we see here is five power supply units. What we have is four identical units. Those are 120 watt each uh, ultrasonic drivers, the transducer drivers. And then we have a board down here, which is essentially pulling double duty. It's driving two of the transistors, as well as it has the relays to drive the heating coils, which are just 120 volt heating coils. And it has the electronics, so the control board is also going to this bigger power supply board. So it has like one master power supply board. When you turn on the uh, ultrasonics, what it does is it activates this board. And then this board sends power to all the other boards. But it's not parallel. If you look, it's daisy chain. Power goes here, loops to here, loops to here loops to here I, uh, I would rather have it be all parallel from the master board rather than having it be a big long daisy chain because the wires down here are taking hundreds of watts they're taking the power of all the other power supplies the fan turns on when the ultrasonic transducers are turned on and uh, how they do that another a bit of hinkiness if we look the fan <laughs> wires are just soldered to the bottom of the input on this last power board so when the Ultrasonics are turned on and power is delivered to this board. They just have the wire soldered so it turns on the fan at the same time. Uh, not the most elegant approach, but I suppose it works. One thing I was going to mention is this bottom panel here. This has an incredibly strong magnet on it. This bottom panel is a stainless steel as well. So that was a that's a nice touch. You can see way down there, they do have the ground wire going to the case. And then if I shine this in here, and I was just a little bit worried about it. If I can just get the camera in there, you can see here this tape. So the heating elements are long heating elements and they run just along the bottom edge. Um, I'm trying to get a feel for how wide they are. They're not too wide. It seems the healing elements, they're about an inch up on the pan. So there's one on each side of the pan, one there and one over here. So they just want to be safe by telling you to fill it three quarters full, but the heating elements are near the bottom of the pan. So as long as you have like three or I put in three gallons, that would be just fine for um, making sure it doesn't overheat. Other than that, I wanted to get a look inside. I'll, there's a ton of reviews of ultrasonic uh, cleaners on YouTube, and very few of them they actually take a look inside. So at least they've zip-tied the wires together. They did uh, hot glue them to prevent fatiguing on each of the ultrasonic transducers. If you have any issues in there, um, pretty easy to repair, to tell you the truth. And these are 60-watt transducers. Those are pretty beefy transducers, and it is interesting to see 10 of them in there. And it's nice to see that design. That is not a bad design because it's evenly distributing all the power across the bottom of the pan. One oddity is you can see that they use machine thread screws on sheet metal when they should have used a different type of screws. But these are chrome plated. So I assume that's to reduce the chance of them rusting because it is a device that works with liquids. But nonetheless, machine thread screws are not what you use with sheet metal. And you can see what they've done is that this is a much harder. So they what they've done is they've glued the pan to the top edge of uh, the case. That's how they got it in there.